Hi, everyone. My name is Dawn, and I'm going to wait another minute or so just to make sure that everyone's able to connect um, before we get started. All right. So it looks like most people, there may be a few that'll join us as we go along. My name is Dawn Yarjo. I'm from the Office of Admissions, and I'd like to welcome all of you. Um, I have two wonderful speakers um, that you can certainly ask questions. We have a brief presentation. Um, we have Dr. Karen Mortzikos. Dr. Mortzikos is the Executive Vice Dean of the School of Medicine. And we have Dr. Ann Messman. Um, she is the Associate Dean for Graduate Medical Education, and they're here to talk to you about our three-year MD program. Um, so I'm not 100% sure if Dr. Messman is starting or Dr. Mortzikos, but I will let you two take it off. Great. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Ann Messman. I'm, um, as Don said, I'm the Associate Dean of Graduate Medical Education and uh, the Program Director also for the three-year MD program. Um, so what we're going to do, we just have a really brief uh, seven or eight slide presentation just to give you all, all an overview. And then um, if you want, uh, you can put questions. Uh, we have a chat, right? Yeah, you can put questions in the chat or um, you can virtually raise your hand and unmute yourself at the end of the presentation. Um, the presentation is meant to be brief and um, this session is supposed to be interactive uh, with us just available to answer any questions that you might have. Um, Karen, did you, or Dr. Mertzikos, did you want to say anything? Nope, that's basically it, but really we just want, um, the emphasis is really on you and asking the questions that you have. So answering the questions that you may have. So we just wanna present this stuff to you and then be able to have a, a conversation with you guys in a little bit. Great, so um, just as a general overview uh, regarding the, the purpose of the three-year MD and the residencies that we off offer. Um, so obviously three years is less than four. So we are cutting one year um, off of your education um, without sacrificing any of the, the um, material really that you'll be getting uh, to obtain your MD. So uh, what this does for you is it's one year less of loans if you have to take them, it's one year less of tuition. It gets you practicing one year earlier so you're um, earning money a year earlier. Um, it's, it's really not about that though. You know, this isn't, the three-year MD isn't like, a sale. It's not like, oh, seven, you know, 25% off sale. It's meant for, for um, students that already know what they want to go into. And you can see the residencies that we offer at this point. Um, as we grow and mature, we um, may be expanding which residencies we offer, but we offer basically every residency program that you can imagine. Um, but it is, the three-year MD is meant for people that know exactly which uh, residency program they'd like to do. And the way that they know that is that they have done substantial work in that field prior to coming to medical school. Go to the next slide. So um, I'll show you in a graphic way um, how the three-year MD works. Um, people learn differently. So this is sort of the more written way. So pre-clerkship is what you guys would typically consider your the first two years of medical school. At Wayne State, we don't call them years, we call them segments. So it would be segment one and segment two. So um, segment one and segment two are identical for the three-year MD students and the four-year MD traditional students. Um, the difference between the three-year and the four-year students starts in between segment two and segment three. Um, segment three is when your clerkships start. And so um, before the clerkships start, you will start um, one month earlier than the four-year cohort. Um, and what that does is it cuts off a one month of study time for step one. The idea behind that is that since you're already um, basically guaranteed a residency spot, we just need you to pass step one. Um, you guys may know that step one has become pass fail anyways, so we just need you to pass it. And then you're gonna start your clerkship work one month earlier or four weeks earlier. Um, after segment three, you still do have a segment four. Um, and segment four is gonna consist of you taking step two doing one month of emergency medicine and uh, one month of a sub-internship, <clears throat> which could be uh, general surgery or internal medicine. Um, this not only meets, but it exceeds the requirement to have 130 weeks of medical school, um, which is a requirement by the LCME. So you are still doing what every other MD student does. Um, this is how it looks. So on the left, you can see year one, year two, and year three. 
And then at the top, you can see the months. So you would start segment one in July, just like everybody else. You start segment two the following April, just like everybody else. Um, but that gap between step or segment two and segment three um, is one week shorter for the three year MD students than the four year. And then you can see at the bottom right, segment four was um, your emergency medicine, your sub I, and step two. <clears throat> Mentorship and advising is really, really a huge strength and pillar of this program. Um, basically, the day that you start, July 1st, um, you are going to be paired up with me as the program director um, and a representative from whatever residency program that you're going into um, so that you can start getting integrated into that residency program starting on day one. Um, so we will help you to identify who that person is and you'll start working with them, um, hopefully do a research project, maybe when you're um, available, go to their grand rounds. We want you to be invited to their holiday parties. We want you to be um, involved in that residency program from the moment that you step foot there. And um, in terms of uh, me as your three-year MD advisor, um, we will be meeting on a monthly basis as a group and then privately as needed. <clears throat> um, and then in terms of the residency interview process. So the way the three-year MD works in terms of getting accepted into it is first you apply for the, the standard four-year Wayne State Medical School. Once you get accepted to the four-year MD program, there's a supplemental application if you'd like to apply for the <clears throat> three-year program. There is a three-year MD admissions committee that is completely separate from the four-year MD admissions committee. And so what the three-year MD admissions committee does is they look at your application. If they think that you have experience that's appropriate to become a three-year MD student, um, then the three-year MD admissions committee will interview you. And then if, after the interview, it still seems appropriate to move forward. We will pass your application on to the desired residency program. And then that residency program director will do whatever, we, we don't dictate how they conduct their interview with you, um, but they will do an interview and decide within about a month whether you're accepted into their residency program slash the three-year MD. <clears throat> What's notable is that um, there is no written commitment either from you or the residency program to get a residency spot um, that violates rules of the match process. Um, and we'll talk about different ways where you may decide you want to go back into the regular four-year MD pool or the residency program decides that maybe this isn't the right fit. We'll talk about that in just a second. So these things that are on the screen all must be done in order to stay in the three-year MD. <clears throat> so you have to pass all of your coursework on the first attempt. That includes your preclinical work as well as your clerkships. You have to pass step one and step two on the first try. Um, you have to meet all the requirements of the mentoring program, not have any professional professionalism violations. And you, um, because of the way the program works, you cannot take any leave of absence. Um, if any of these things are not met, you will automatically decelerate into the four-year MD program. No hurt feelings. You're just, it's, you're just still staying in medical school and, um, and going back into the regular four-year pool. And then you guys also have power. If you decide, you know what, I made a mistake and I, I didn't choose the right specialty or I didn't choose, I don't want to stay in Detroit long-term or anything, anything for any reason, you need to take a leave of absence. You can uh, choose to decelerate into the four-year program at any time. And that's, that's it. Um, so now it's time for you guys to ask lots of questions. I don't see anything in the chat. So just feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. So there were some questions that came um, up when you signed up. And so if no one has a chat or doesn't raise their hand and want a question, I'll start with um, Dr. Messman, do you know how the interview with the residency program will differ from the interviews for the regular MD program? Um, that's a great question. So. Um, as I was saying in the presentation, we do not dictate how the residency program director chooses to conduct their residency. So they may have it where they, it, it will be all virtual. It'll all be Zoom. Um, they may choose to just have the program director do the interview, or they may have a whole panel of people, um, but we don't dictate that. So I, 
you know, the answer is I'm not sure, but it's it's up to the residency program director. I can add on for that just for a second. I mean, part of the emphasis um, for the residencies is to understand um, the breadth and depth of, of your commitment to that specialty. So that certainly will be a part of it. Um, you know, we, I, I have done this and I'm sure uh, Dr. Messman has too. We, we've interviewed medical students for residency. So it's just, it's a different focus in terms of um, understanding from the applicant um, sort of where they are. Do they, you know, do they get what the specialty really does? Does that match up with them? And is the tone right for the type of program that um, they're trying to, to match into? So I think that's a little bit of a, of a different um, emphasis. But in terms of how it's conducted, that's entirely up to the programs. So they may have you interview with just a few people. They may have you do the whole interview gamut as if you were coming in with their fourth years who are looking to match. Um, that's going to be program specific. And there's a few questions in the chat that I can answer. Um, can we apply for more than one specialty if we have sufficient experience in two or more specialties? Uh, the answer to that is no. The, the whole point of the three-year MD is that you're firmly committed to one specialty. So we would have people choose the one specialty that they'd like to go into. Um, if one wishes to switch residency specialties, are the requirements to switch determined by the residency PD or the preferred specialty? or of the preferred specialty, um, there, there is not an option to switch residency specialties. Um, as I said, on July 1st of your segment one, you're starting to become integrated into a specific residency program and mentored. Um, so if you decide to switch specialties, that would result in decelerating to the four-year program. If I can just jump in for a quick second, the way this works into three years instead of four years is what gets truncated. So you don't sort of speed up anything else. You just sort of jettison the back part. And the back part is electives to help you figure out what you want to do, because presumably you already know what you want to do, and time to interview and do audition ro rotation. So what that usually means is if you want to go into pediatrics and you know you really want to match at a certain program, you try to get in a way rotation there and you go and you audition. Well, you ostensibly know where you're going to be going and into what specialty initially when you come in. And so you have that commitment to sort of see it through to match, um, you know, sort of going forward. So that gets truncated. So if you have questions about other specialties or other things that you want to do, we really want to encourage you to do the four years and explore all of that because that allows you to have all of that flexibility. If you have had um, some a career trajectory, maybe you're a PA and you've always done cardiothoracic surgery and you've decided that you want to go to medical school and be a cardiothoracic surgeon, then you sort of have a very clear example of that. Now, that's not how it is for everybody, and I don't mean to be discouraging, but the idea here is that you know sort of your clear laser focus on what you want to do and where you want to be. And we encourage everybody to have all the options open, which is why if you do commit to this program and then you sort of say, wait a minute, I'm not sure, great, you can still figure that all out. Of course, we want you to be trained well and to be really happy and successful. So um, that's kind of a little bit of a distinction there. So what you lose is sort of that exploratory piece because you've sort of done that work, if you will, on the front end. And then Sarah asked, um... I didn't get a good look at the segment schedule, but do you still take shelf exams in each specialty? Uh, absolutely. So the requirements to pass a clerkship, and for those of you that don't know, a shelf exam is an exam that you take um, during your clerkships. So general surgery will have a shelf exam, OBGYN, and it's just their sort of like end of clerkship test. Um, the requirements to pass a clerkship are the same if you're a three-year MD or four-year MD. So if that um, rotation has a shelf exam and that's part of passing the clerkship, then yes, you would take it just like everybody else. Um, given that we are admitted into three-year program and the criteria have been met is our residency spot guaranteed, meaning that we don't have to go through the match process. So that's actually, um, it's an excellent question. So it is guaranteed as long as you meet the requirements. However, you still do need to go through the match process. Um, that's just, there's, there's no way around that. But um, what you would do, the, the way that this would work is that you interview, you can interview wherever you'd like if, if other programs offer you an interview, um, but you would basically be agreeing to rank that program number one. And that program is agreeing to rank you such that you are guaranteed a spot there. 
Um, there is obviously a lot of trust involved in that process, um, but that's why we have you start being mentored by that program from the first day so that you're forming that relationship. Um, it is never the intent that the residency program would not rank you such that you would match there. That would, that would not be the intention of the program and it wouldn't really make any sense. Why would they spend all this time with you and then not rank you? But it is illegal for the way that the NRMP, which is National Resident Match Program, they oversee the match process. It's illegal basically um, to guarantee or put in writing that we guarantee you a spot. Uh, Karen, I don't know if you had anything else to add to that. No, it, it, it's basically it's um, and this is how well, there's many of these programs in the country and this is how it works. So at, you know, at any time um, you always have an option, even after three years and you have, you know, if you haven't done audition rotations or something's changed in your life and you would like to, you know, not take the fourth year, but sort of swing for the fence and try and match, you certainly can. Um, you know, but the intention is and the idea of this program is, is that for whatever reason, you know, you would like to sort of know that you're doing this in three years, you have the experience, maybe a family based here, you sort of know that this is kind of the trajectory you would like to take for your career. And so you commit to that. And if there's, you know, there's kind of space there so that it's, you know, no one, no one is bound. Um, and if at some point, like Dr. Messman said, it sort of, you know, it feels like it's not quite the right connection. Um, that there are, you know, plenty of ways to offer, but, you know, that's, that is how all of these programs in the country sort of function with that understanding going forward, but that there's always room for either party to, to depart from that plan. Um, and regarding general surgery, yes, it is an option. Um, the, the list has been somewhat dynamic, but yes, general surgery is, is definitely an option. And we'll make sure that the three-year MD website has all of the appropriate residencies. Um, can you briefly discuss the kind of experiences that may be considered as sufficient experience? Would that include volunteer work and shadowing or paid clinical experiences? Um, we don't have, you know, it must be this or this or this. I would say that, um, you know, volunteering or shadowing is probably not sufficient unless it was something really extraordinary. Um, we're thinking more like, um, as Dr. Morzigo said, like you've been a PA or a respiratory therapist or a paramedic, and now you want to go into emergency medicine, really significant, you know, more than probably more than a year or two uh, sort of experience within that given specialty. Um, some of the applications that we've had um, do have more of that, like, like, oh, I volunteered at a clinic or I shadowed this doctor and unfortunately that hasn't really met the criteria that we're looking for. Um, um, one of the things that I think Dr. Messman and I both are really enthusiastic about is please apply. You have, you really have nothing to lose. It's, you know, the supplemental thing and, you know, um, it's hard for you to know exactly what the criteria is. So, you know, please, you know, put the application forth. You don't have anything to lose. Um, but, you know, it, it really, um, we've had questions in the past from like some of the undergraduates who are, you know, coming in and we, we, you know, looking to apply to medical school and that sort of thing. And, you know, there are people have been saying, you know, like my mom's an orthopedic surgeon and I feel really committed to it. And we say that's fantastic. But as all of us on the other side are sort of further along in the book know that a lot of us came to med school wanting to do A, B or C, and then realized that we became very passionate about Z, which would have never happened, you know, before, because we, we didn't really know about it. So, that's not exactly in alignment, but I think more than anything, we really want to encourage you if you have a strong interest in this and you feel like there's something in your background um, that would put you into this trajectory to absolutely apply. Um, and Ellie wrote, what do you think is the most challenging aspect of the three-year program versus the traditional four-year program for medical students? Um, you know, the curriculum, as, as you guys have seen, are essentially identical. It's just the fourth year is kind of lopped off because you've already made the decision about what you'd like to do. Um, you know, I, I've never was a three-year MD student, so I, I can't speak to it from a personal sense, but um, I, I guess maybe it, it might be challenging if you're starting to have second thoughts and, and dealing with all of that. That's why the mentorship aspect is so strong. Um, Karen, do you have, Dr. Matsikos, do you have any um, ideas what, what challenges three-year MD students have faced? I think um, so there's been enough of these around for long enough that we've had a chance to study kind of people coming out, right? 
So now they're able to look with the, you know, the ever powerful retrospectoscope and see how they do. And basically they do as well or better as their peers who did four years. Now, one of the potential challenges is that during that, four, that fourth year, that part that kind of gets lopped off is where you get more of a chance to hone and develop some of your clinical skills, right? Because if you think about it, you're sort of getting a fracture, fraction of that clinical part is when you're out in the hospital wearing your short coat, rounding with teams, following patients, doing all of that. So one of the potential challenges to this is if you don't have enough of sort of a track record coming in of understanding these clinical skills, then sometimes that truncated piece doesn't necessarily allow you enough time to mature those clinical skills. So again, that sort of speaks to some of what we look at in terms of who's applying here because you don't really get as much of a chance to spend as, at the same amount of time with patients, if you will. So that's one of the potential challenges. Now, as we look at students who've gone through this, because of how these are um, these programs are designed, um, most people coming in do have um, sort of a little bit of a leg up um, compared to some of the other students who are coming in. And so that's where that advantage and kind of that development works through. Because you start a little further ahead in the book. So when you hit third year, you kind of are able to do that piece that gets lobbed off, if that makes sense. Um, but in terms of other things, the pace is the same. And I really want to emphasize that because a lot of people hear three-year MD and what they start to think about are the combined undergraduate med school programs where you do sort of college in two years or three years, and that sort of gets jammed in. And then you go to medical school. This is different because it's not accelerated. It's just truncated so that you finish sooner. And that's an important piece. So you're not doing your classwork faster. You're not doing, let's, you know, if everybody else gets eight weeks, you don't get four weeks and have to do the same amount of material. I really want to emphasize that because that's, that's not really tenable in medical school. It's a little bit different. It's, it's really not tenable and you don't get to get some of your credits for med school and kind of backfill them into your undergraduate. And in a lot of ways that those combined programs work, this is different. So it's not everybody else does anatomy in, in four months and you do anatomy in two months. So that's not really kind of the, the, the challenge that's there in that space. You have a little less time um, to study for step one, but again, because we feel that step one is, you know, is now pass fail, um, it becomes a little, a little less relevant. And I, I think I saw one of the questions pop up about what is pass and that's dependent sort of on, on the cohort each year, um, sort of where that sits. So it depends on kind of each, each year how they, how they take step and how that goes. Um, so I hope that kind of answers that. And there was a question about, um, can we see what hospitals are affiliated with each specialty so we know what hospital system we might be working with? Um, that's a great question. So right now the residency programs that are on the table, so to speak, are all of the Wayne State sponsored residencies, um, of which there are eight, and then all of the Detroit Medical Center DMC residencies. Um, I'll make sure that the website has links to those programs uh, web pages so that you can explore them on your own. And of course, for all of you at any time, um, I'll put my email in the chat. You guys can email me anytime with any question that you might have about the program or which residency is this? I'm confused. Is it urology at Wayne State or urology at DMC or urology at St. John? Because this is, Wayne State is a complicated web um, and we have affiliations with lots of um, residency programs. So um, just email me if anything is, is not clear. Um, Rebecca asked if you were to finish within three years, but decide that at the end, you no longer want that specialty. Could you begin that match process as normal? If you decide at the end of three years, like, oh geez, I thought I wanted to be an OB, but it turns out I like babies, I like peds. No problem. You just go back into the normal four year cohort and then you would do your fourth year with your electives and your away rotations and do the match process in your fourth year. Um, we already answered about passing. Are there still opportunities to do community service, research, volunteering abroad? Um, so community service and research, absolutely. Um, volunteering abroad, if that would, that would typically require you to take time off. Um, and so if, if it's the sort of thing where you'd be taking a leave of absence, then that would unfortunately mean that you would have to um, jump back into the, the four-year pool. Um, in terms of the community service and the research, 100%, in fact, we're gonna make a research project a requirement um, within the residency program that you're going into. Um, is there mentoring available for specific fellowships? 
Absolutely. There's mentorship available for anything that you want. You know, so the example was, I'm interested in IM, but specifically GI, could I be paired with a mentor who works in this field? 100%. Yes. Is this the first year that this program is implemented? Yes, this is the first year. Um, we're taking a maximum of 10 students this year. Uh, next year, we'll take a maximum of 15 and thereafter it'll be a maximum of 20. So it'll be, at the end of the day, it'll be less than 10% of the class um, that you're in will be three year MD students. Okay, I think that's all the written questions. I There were hands raised before. Are they still raised or? Are they put down? Would you say the three-year program is for more mature applicants that have been working in healthcare for some time? Um, yes, I would say that you know you don't have to be forty years old and have been a you know a, a PA in internal medicine for for a decade. Um, in terms of accepting undergrads, um, like Dr. Murzico said, if you're not sure if you have the experience, just apply or send me an email, and I'm happy to look at your. CV, your resume, whatever. Um, but I would say in general, if you're someone that went straight through high school, straight to undergrad, straight to med school, it would be really difficult to have the sort of experience that we're expecting um, that shows your dedication to a certain field. But by all means, ask me questions, send me your information and apply. <clears throat> are there a set number of residency program spots that are designated for three-year MD students? For example, four three-year MD students want PEDS. So um, there is not a set number per se. Um, we're, you know, we're in our first year of doing this. And so we haven't been put in that situation where we have four incredible applicants that all wanna go into PEDS. Theoretically, if it did get to that point, it would be up to the program director to tell us, you know, I, I want all four of these and I will reserve four spots for them. <laughs> or the program director says, you know, I, I only want to reserve one spot and this one is, you know, the, the one that I want. So again, we're, we're trying not to micromanage the program directors and follow their lead to an extent. Um, so it would be pretty much up to the program director. Um, but you do have to keep in mind that if there are 20 incredible applicants that all want PEDS and the program director loves all 20 of them, we only have 10 spots available for three-year MD this year. So and the off chance that that happens, we would have to be, um, we'd have to, to figure out how many spots to give each program, but uh, we don't have it set a priori. Are the required classes the same as the four-year med school? Yes. Again, just to clarify what you're truncating is some of your study time, just a few weeks sort of off of each step and um, the opportunity to do electives and away rotations that would sort of be the audition or, you know, in order to get interviews in order to match because you will have already interviewed and potentially know where you're going to do your residency. So that's what gets lost. Everything is done. Everything else is done at the same pace as, you know, with everyone else um, and for the same amount of time. So you're going to be in classes sort of with everybody as you go along. Um, the difference is going to be that you're going to start um, segment two a little bit earlier. And then when people are rounding the corner and heading into fourth year, um, you are going to be graduating and you're going to be starting, um, you know, your internships. Um, when someone asked earlier what some of the challenges were, some people anticipated that it would be a little odd that suddenly you're the intern for who were your classmates. Right. So people are like, how does that work? And actually, um, it's the answer has been great because people know each other. Um, and in a lot of ways, it was almost like um, they kind of had a mole as an intern, right, who kind of knew all the ins and outs and all of this stuff. And, and students actually did great with interns who were their um, classmates because, you know, everybody's sort of really willing to help each other and it really builds a great team within um, that rotation for people. So on both sides, by far and away, the response has been positive, but you know, some people are, were kind of cringy about like, oh my gosh, now I'm asking like the person I used to hang out with and commiserate about third year, I'm saying you have to check labs and I need you to do a presentation on hyperparathyroidism and you're kind of like, mm. um, but it, it actually works out great because everybody really builds a great team. 
So that's, that was something I just thought of now that, that we were talking about too. And Stephen asked if the slides will be available. Yes, this is being recorded. Um, so you guys will have access um, to, this, to this presentation and the slides afterwards. Um, I wanted to bring up one small point because I'm emergency medicine. Um, and that is that if you decide that your chosen specialty is emergency medicine, um, you remember that segment four has a required um, emergency medicine component. If you decide that you want to go into emergency medicine, we would take that month and instead of doing it segment four, which doesn't really make sense, like why would you, you're going into EM, why would you wait so long to do your EM rotation? For those students, we would put their EM block during segment three and take a month of segment three and put it in the spot of, of emergency medicine in segment four. Does that make sense? That's the one kind of exception, the one specialty that would have a little bit different um, schedule. These have all been really, really great questions that you guys have asked. This is awesome. So um, there was a question um, to me about the application for those who are currently holding an offer. Um, once a week, um, anybody who's received an offer, um, if they haven't already, they will get a notice about the um, tertiary application. So they'll get the link to the application. Um, if for some reason you did not get that email, um, look in your spam first of all, but um, feel free to send an email to anyone. Um, you can send it to MD admissions, uh, medical doctor admissions with an S at the end at wayne.edu and we will be happy to make sure that we send it back to you. And application, um, applications are due at the end of this month, January 31st. And I put my email in the chat if anyone um, needs to email me anytime. What if we don't receive a decision? If, if you don't receive a decision until after the deadline, um, then unfortunately, uh, you know, then you would not be able to apply for the three-year MD. Other questions? We still have a little bit more time. Um, we've kind of dedicated an hour to answering any questions, um, but we're not gonna keep you on here. Um, but if there are any other questions that anyone might have. Someone just raised their hand. Oh, Ellie. Sorry for, yeah, sorry for all the questions, but I don't think I'm understanding correctly. So you apply to the normal four-year program, have to, then you get admitted to the four-year program, and then you would designate that you're interested in a three-year program? Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you're not given an application to three-year MD until you get accepted into four-year MD. Okay, so they're two different, technically, like, applications. Okay. Yeah, the three-year MD is just a supplementary application. It literally has four questions. What do you want to go into? So just you put internal medicine or whatever. And then there's three short answer questions. You know, why do you want to go into that? How do you know? What what sort of prior experience have you had? It's It's all things that we've talked about. We're not, like, tell me what your favorite song is and, and what color you identify with the most. I mean, it's, they're not like esoteric. We just wanna know why, why you're interested. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Sure. Okay, if, if no one else has any questions, Ellie, I assume your hand is still raised just from before and I'm looking really quickly and I don't see anything else, I'm gonna say thank you very much. Um, you have Dr. Messman's um, email address. Um, any other questions you might have, please feel free to forward to mdadmissions at wayne.edu. It's in the chat and I will be more than happy to make sure that the questions get to the right person. Um, we will get that website updated as soon as possible. Um, right now, I would say we're a little bit short staffed, but we're not necessarily short staffed. A lot of us are working remotely. 
Um, so just give us a little bit of time to catch up with that website, but we will get that updated as soon as possible. And any other questions, please feel free to let us know. Absolutely. This is this is like sort of one of the highlights of, of, of our day, the part where we get to talk to all of you and, and talk about this program. We're obviously very enthusiastic and excited about it. And we really look forward to your applications and hearing more from you. And if any of you are as nerdy as I am and you want to read um, journal articles about three year MD programs and what has been studied about them, just email me. I have a Google Drive full of articles. Um, because you know, I wanted before I got involved in this, I wanted to understand is three year MD a good thing? Is there evidence to support it, et cetera? And the evidence is overwhelming um, how positive it is. And just as background, there's um, two universities in, in um, Canada that only do three year MD for, for decades. That's all they've done. Um, so there's a lot of precedent to this. We're not just, you know, Dr. Murtzikos and I didn't just sit around one day and say, Let's, let's make a three-year program and save people a bunch of money. So um, if you're very nerdy and want more information, then just email me and I'll give you the um, Google Drive link. I mean, we're, we're the first in Michigan to do it, but we're by no means the first in the country to do it. Um, and one of the strengths of our um, program uh, is the uh, extent of, we basically offer every specialty we offer. And not, not every program does that. So some offer um, either just, you know, internal medicine or family medicine. Some offer like internal medicine, family medicine and peds or OBGYN sort of specialties that are considered kind of um, primary care, if you will. Um, and then some offer a few more, but we're one of the few schools that offer all of our specialties, including all of our surgical specialties. Um, so that's actually one of the distinctions of our program and sort of how strongly we feel committed to um, really just having excellence in, in every aspect, including um, the breadth and depth of, of how we can train our, um, our students. So uh, we're really excited about it if you haven't noticed. And so we're really happy that you guys were here and we're able to talk with you about it. Yeah, we're both super excited about it. Well, thank you all for coming today. Um, email us liberally if you have any questions and, um, you know, apply if you're interested, and I look forward to reading your applications. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good Thank afternoon. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.